waking up Eastern Carolina <sighs> and the world. <laughs> You're listening to the number one morning show with North Carolina Broadcasters Hall of Fame host, Henry Hinton. Listen on air or online at WTIBFM.com. This is Talk of the Town. Hey, hour two, Talk of the Town. Welcome in, everybody. The uh, weather is going to be hot today, and as we uh, continue through the week, things are going to improve dramatically. We're going to have some nice weather, 77 degrees as we join you here in Greenville. It is already 79 degrees uh, at Pine Knoll Shores, where I wish I was. Is Is it where I wish I was or where I wish I were? Mm, Twas. Twas. twas would have been that's where I have already been. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Mm-hmm. It twas six minutes after the hour. Twer. Matt Engelbrecht Ooh. is here. Twer Shakespearean. Um, Twer classy. I wish where I wish I were. I Twer. believe would be the correct way of saying that. Trent McGee is here also. Good morning, McGee. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to see mm-hmm. you. Less than two weeks away now from the uh, kickoff of football. We start our big coverage this weekend on uh, 94.3 The Game. Patrick Johnson, the great P-Man, returns. Uh, that sounds like a fun event that's going to be going on uh, out at Academy Sports. It does. Weather's going to be great for it. It's going to be a nice event. I'm looking forward to it. I can walk right across the street and be there. 94, oh, where are you going to be? I said I can walk right across the street and be there. From where? From my house. I kind of live across the, 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 oh, the I way. Get, oh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, yeah. It's I wouldn't the, suggest that you cross Memorial Drive on Saturday. No, but. I'm not going to. That was just, I was just saying, that was yeah. metaphorically speaking. Look both ways. That wasn't a metaphor. But anyway, mm-hmm. I don't know whether it was speaking. or was it were or what it was. You know what That's I meant. Yeah. Classy. Truth is not truth. Well. Yeah. I don't know what the definition of is is. You're very classy today. I just thought it sounded good to say <laughs> metaphorically speaking. <laughs> it's not a metaphor. It just sounded good, it's though. A, it's an actuality. It's not a I'm, metaphor. I'm actuality speaking. <laughs> So the great (laughs) P-Man's Pigskin Preview will be broadcast live from uh, Academy Sport. And by the way, I heard yesterday that uh, there could be a celebrity guest live with Patrick at uh, Academy Sports uh, coming up on Saturday. Mm -hmm. Uh, But they're going to have all sorts of giveaways out there. They're going to have free food. They're going to have, I am told, a gift card for the first 50 people that come starting uh, around 11 o'clock or so. I think that's the way. It's confusing the way they've written it, but. But, you know, great great opportunity to get out there and get some tailgating stuff, get ready for the season. Academy Sports on Memorial Drive in Greenville coming up Saturday. 11 to 3 is the event. Patrick will be on the air live there from 11 to 1. And uh, he'll be doing the great pigskin, PJ's great pigskin preview <laughs> from the P-Man. You sure about that? I'm not sure about any of that, but. Uh, eight minutes after. Uh, partly cloudy afternoon thunderstorms coming again today. 40% chance of them. Today is the last day of the afternoon thunderstorms for a while. Matt, take it from there and tell us how great the weather is going to be the rest of the week. So today it's going to be hot, 100 to 105 with the heat index. It's going to be more sticky than hot. It's not the heat. It's, it's the, the humidity. humidity. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Uh, thunderstorms going <laughs> to be as strong. We've had. Like uh, a, it sounds like a nutty professor when he does that. Anyway. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I had a professor he's a, that wants to. He's a nutty that. meteorologist. It's um, actually it's you know uh, home improvement. The guy from across the fence. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The guy you never could see his face. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, um, where were we? Uh, cold front coming in on Wednesday. That's going to clear things out for Thursday and Friday. Uh, typically, we don't see these strong cold fronts in August, uh, so when we do get them, it's quite the treat. That's going to take us down to lower 80s for highs, overnight lows in the lower 60s, possibly the upper 50s. So uh, my windows are going to be open most of the weekend as those temperatures will be hanging around. Got it. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of breaking news this morning. If you're just waking up and I uh, have not heard the story, uh, Silent Sam, the Confederate statue at the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, got pulled down last night. And... Um, it's going to be examined, and uh, it's going to be controversial. It's going to be talked about. It's going to be part of the news cycle for the next week. Uh, I suspect George Stephanopoulos will have a big story on that on Sunday morning and make a big deal out of it. And um, 
the people that tore it down, who broke the law last night, will uh, face charges and nothing will be done. That is my guess. That is my guess. Look at, look at Rebecca just showed up over here. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca Thurston in the hizzle. We have the Greenville Fire Chief coming up. Is, is he here? We will be with him in a moment. You guys have some coffee. Talk amongst yourselves. Relax. So uh, Chief Eric Griffin will be here in just a couple of minutes with the um, lawsuit being filed against uh, Candy Smith at the Greenville City Council by police officers. The fire chief has also been under a little fire of his own. We're going to give him a chance to respond to some of that this morning. But they're here to talk about a recruiting event, recruiting people into the fire and rescue division. I used to always be a fireman growing up. I got a fire engine every well, year for your Christmas. your chance, baby. I love going to a fire station. I was enamored with fire trucks and a fire station. Just something about it. I loved it. My dad was a volunteer fireman, and he never went to a fire. But uh, nevertheless, I still wanted to be a fireman. He never went to a fire? No, my dad was the last one to get to the, the siren. You know how the siren in the small towns, <laughs> when they go off? You know how they sound. Yeah, he'd know? be the last guy in. He was the last. He would have to take his own car to the fire because he would always be like, oh, Dad, the siren's going off. He'd go, oh, yeah. I'm getting up. I'm getting up. And by that time, they were already at the fire. <laughs> it's the last one to get there every time. Mr. Rick, if you're listening right now, I'm going to give you equal time on He knows that. it's true. <laughs> equal time. My dad, go. It's a fire. Yep, I'm going. I'm getting up. That's bad, man. I know. You're calling your dad out like that. Oh, me calling him out? I thought you meant the fire part. Being late was bad. <laughs> yeah. uh, 11 minutes after the hour. Uh, we are still getting calls from down Moorhead City, Newburn, Jacksonville about our uh, time change down there, right, Coach? We had two last hour. And um, if people are listening on 94.1, we have a new schedule on WNBU 94.1. Now, we're on 8 to 10 every day down there, so we're delayed by one hour. Is that working good, Michael? Is it working okay now? Had to get the bugs worked out of it at first. But, uh, so uh, we're still live on seven, uh, 7 to 9. We're live in the studio here in Greenville on 103.7 and uh, Cable 7 and Facebook Live. But if you, miss us, uh, if you miss us, you can always pick us up on WTIBFM.com. And we do stream live the audio on WTIBFM also. So those of you down in Moorhead, New Bern, and uh, Jacksonville that still want to hear the show live, you can do that. Just go to WTIBFM.com and stream. Or you can uh, go to TuneIn Radio and stream. That's what I did last Friday night. I am, uh, I'm just going nuts. I have right here. I got to tell you. What you got there? My, my hearing aids. I, I, I took them off uh, this morning because when I wear this earpiece, mm -hmm. it doesn't fit real well. We got, uh, Michael's trying to figure out how to get the Bluetooth into my earpiece. These hearing aids are unbelievable. Uh, Jay over at A1 Affordable Hearing. This is an ad, but I got to tell you about this new thing that happened yesterday. Nice. So I, I've got these. Uh, I've got these hearing aids, and I've got this one right here that goes in my left ear, and I'll put it in right now because I can put that one in and still not have the right one in. But um, so um, it's got Bluetooth technology. I mean, if you here's the thing. I, I, I used to think, well, if I wear a hearing aid. I'm going to look old and doty. Er. I, I am. Er? Yeah. Old, older and dotier? Yeah. So, are you, so I was already old and. <laughs> Trying to beat me McGee, no one really likes you. But, uh, so, so, but, but I, I, I have now uh, come to the realization that I'm going to be the guy that everyone is uh, jealous of because I have this hearing aid. And let me tell you why, because it's got Bluetooth, number one. So, McGee, if you call me on my phone, I will be talking to you but listening to you through my ear, through that's, my hearing aid. It's an amazing but feature. But that's not the crazy thing. Engelbrecht, listen to this. Yes, so Jay taught me this yesterday. Okay. All right. Jay at A1 Affordable Hearing, and I highly suggest if you need hearing aids, you go see Jay. He's, he's the bomb. I love Jay. But all this new technology is crazy. So he said to me yesterday – by the way, if you're sitting in a uh, if you're sitting in a busy sports bar or something and you can't hear the TV, mm -hmm. here's what you do: you take a photograph of the screen, and the audio from the TV will go into your ear. No. Oh. no, you cut that out. I gotta see it. I Jay. gotta see it. I did it yesterday at lunch. What? I went to lunch yesterday. I sat at the bar at a local restaurant here. 
and just had a salad. And while I was in there, they had the Little League World Series on ESPN. So I went, okay, I'm going to try this. So I put, I put it up there. I took a photograph. It scanned it. it it's, and then I looked at it. It said scanning, detecting, syncing. 30 seconds later, boom, the audio is in my ear. What? And I'm watching ESPN across the room, listening to it in my hearing aid. Is it's that the, the craziest thing you've ever heard? The future's in your life? here. Yep. It is. It is. The yep, future is that here. Is. That's crazy. Can I'll, I try that? Yes, sir. All you have to do is take a picture. I'll let you put it. I'll, I'll tell you what we'll do. During the news break, we'll go out into the lobby. Wait, wait, wait. I do the news break. Right. Well, you can do it during later. Ah. I, we'll go out into the lobby. I'll take a photograph of, of what's on TV. You got it's you you know it you, you, you got to go to the national channels. It, it you know, like you can't do it with cable seven. There's a list of uh, uh, stations that you can oh, get. Okay. okay. But I mean, just about Still. all the national channels you can get. Yeah. But I mean, think about th- think about how jealous. Instead of being the old doty guy wearing the hearing aid in the, in the sports bar, mm-hmm. er. Mm-hmm. I'll be I'll I'll be the guy that everybody's jealous of because I'll be sitting there in a noisy sports bar watching the game and hearing the play by play while you guys are sitting there clanging wings and And you beers. can adjust the volume, I guess. Oh yeah. The... No, we'll oh, be yeah. the ones asking, wait, what'd they say? Wait, what what happened on the injury? Exactly. What it, wait, wait, what That's they exactly say? right. Yep. I've been there. That's you guys jealous feature. of my hearing aid yet? Yes. I don't even need it. I want it. By the way, if you if you are i I, I highly recommend a1 affordable hearing here in Greenville on uh, Fire Tower Road. What did you say? Uh, it's just Matt. What, what did he say? He doesn't even need it. And he wants it. Oh, I, I he just wants a hearing aid. Oh. Hearing aid. You want to use my other one while I got my earpiece in? <laughs> no. I, I think, think you look so. good with hearing aids. <laughs> Something seems unsanitary about we, that. We use uh, IFBs at the station. I've so just got it's... a little bit of ear cheese on that one. Where are that one? Oh. <laughs> what happened to your classy? My, my ears are fairly <sighs> clean. I'm going to turn back this way. <laughs> My ears are fairly clean. All right, so uh, A1 affordable hearing on uh, Fire Tower Road in Greenwood. Call Jay. I'm telling you. Uh, you'll get them for thousands less. That's the other thing about it. He was telling me yesterday about a guy who had taken his hearing aid somewhere to get it fixed, and they were going to charge him something like uh, two grand to get it fixed, and he fixed it in his office for free. Come on. Come on. A1 Affordable Hearing, one of our great sponsors of the Jay's show. the way. 17 after. By the way, speaking of uh, being in restaurants, uh, Matt, yeah. you're, you're a very recognizable guy in Greenville. Uh, at times. No, people know you when you go into restaurants. I mean, they recognize you, right? Sure. Right? Yeah. Do, do you feel obligated to leave a bigger tip than normal because they know who you are? Um, <laughs> Matt, no. No. No, I... <laughs> I will generally way, over McGee, tip. McGee is very snarky this morning. Have you noticed that? Yeah. But McGee, do people but, recognize you in restaurants? No, but it's Matt. We're talking He's about got Matt. rum in his coffee. So you don't, you don't believe Matt would over tip? <laughs> He's lucky if he tips. <laughs> I don't believe that. I think, I think he's probably a good tipper. Ah, come on now. Yeah. Come on. There's a new online challenge called Tip the Bill Challenge. Have you heard about this one? Uh, all the online challenges recently have kind of been uh, stupid, but this one is uh, like not like the hot water challenge or the in my feelings challenge where kids are jumping out of moving court. That's ridiculous. But here's one. It's a new trend called tip the bill challenge where people are tipping servers 100% of their check. Right. So if your bill's 25 bucks, you leave a $25 tip for the waiter. Oh. And some people are leaving more than that. And then here's the thing. You go all – here's what you do. You take a photograph of it and you put it online and brag about it. <laughs> and you know who you are. <laughs> Matt, you would love that. What? You know who you are. I mean, it's better than taking a photograph of yourself. And, you know. It's true. Some of these people that just take, uh, you know, one selfie after the other and put uh-huh. it. And, and by the way, you know, of food that they're they're you know who you are. I particularly like the ones where people, um, you know, where, where somebody are, you know, you got a photograph, a selfie of a guy on his own Facebook page where he's like looking off into the sunset. Sure. And I'm wondering, how did that photograph take place? Who did he have take that? Mm-hmm. And did he say, hey, wait, 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 wait. Now let's get one of me looking off into the distance. Right. Very pensively. Mm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, right? 
McGee? <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> How do yeah. these photographs happen? You know, <laughs> these are good questions, Henry. <laughs> These I are, mean, taking a selfie of yourself, I mean, putting it on, I mean, that's pretty bold to begin with. But then taking one, having somebody take one of you while you're looking off in the distance. Yeah. Thinking and thinking about things. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something else. Mm -hmm. That's those are the those are the ones that I really love. Should I tip 30 percent or 20 percent? I always tip 20 percent. Yeah. I tip 20 percent. Yeah. Uh, I had a boss one time who told me if you if you over tip. Over the course of the uh, over the course of a year, it won't cost you a hundred dollars, but it will get you a million dollars worth of goodwill with people in the community. Wait, if you do, if, you, if you brag you about it on it? social media, if you brag about because it, because who's going to know media? about it? I'm not doing it unless I can brag about no. it on social media. No, if you no, if let me tell you, if you go into a restaurant and yeah. stiff somebody, oh, okay, they're going to be back in the kitchen talking about it. Number one, mm. and then everybody's going to tell somebody, and before you know it, everybody's going to go. That weather guy on Channel Nine wait, stripped wait, me. Why do you, I mean, wait, Channel Seven. Stop bringing me into this. <laughs> I did really well. I know I that you mind. don't do that. I said if you do, if you do that, we know that you tip regularly on a regular basis, uh, eight and a half percent. We got to go to break. Good. No, you tip twenty percent, don't you? Twenty <laughs> percent. That's what you should tip. I'm just telling you. <laughs> Twenty-one after. We'll be right back. Looking for red hot deals on a new Toyota? You'll find it at Greenville Toyota. Hot, hot, hot. Get our best deals of summer with clearance savings on hundreds of new Toyotas and deals you need to see to believe. At Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. cellular put towers where most others don't so people can schedule a chiropractor visit out here or catch the game live way over here isn't that what you pay for a stronger signal in the middle of anywhere visit real wireless your local u.s cellular authorized agent in ohoski williamston and windsor for the best deals in wireless and great service on a network that works in the middle of anywhere it is an experience that people want to participate in, but we called it Ain't It Great to Tailgate. And sure, when things are going great and you're winning, the excitement accelerates. It was great fun to watch the tradition being built, but we need everybody pulling in the same direction now. We'll get the success back. We need the fans back to be a part of it. What would happen if, if I had to pick up the phone, call 911 for one of my family members or one of my neighbors, what would I do if, if no one was on the other end to respond? What if there was no 911? So you can be a part of the solution. Anybody can be a firefighter, male, female, younger, older. We are school teachers. We are leaders in business. Is me, you, anyone that wants to be. There is no typical firefighter. This is the Pepsi that gets you stuff. Like tickets to... Who doesn't love Pepsi stuff? Drink Pepsi, get stuff. Greenville Toyota's deals are so hot, you need to see them to believe them. Get red hot savings on hundreds of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs, including the extra value of our advantage. Now at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. Matthew. Oh, oh. I know that a lot of times, okay. Mom, it might not seem like I'm listening to you, but I am. And what you say really does matter to me. All the talks we've had over the years, including what you've told me about not using alcohol and other drugs, they stick with me. And they make a difference, especially at times that matter most. Hey, want a drink? No thanks, I'm good. So thank you, Dad, for preparing me for what's ahead. Thanks, Mom, for always being my biggest fan. Thank you for talking. Talk. They hear you. With the information you need to start your day, this is your news update on 103.7 WTIB and 94.1 WNBU. Good morning on this Tuesday time now. 
about 25 minutes uh, past the hour. Latest news headlines from wa 10 wa 10com We're going to start things off uh, Atlantic Beach. Beachgoers were expressing concern Monday, a day after a 14-year-old boy was bitten by a shark while surfing uh, between the Oceana Pier and Dunes Club. The boy was able to swim back to shore, but when emergency crews arrived, he was treated and transported to the hospital to receive stitches. Surfers like Dana Fox say they are concerned it could happen to them out on the waves. Quote, I've always been afraid of shark attacks. I have. I am myself. I have a really big fear of being in the water every time I close my eyes. That's the only thing I can visualize. End quote. The Atlantic Beach Fire and Rescue Department says shark bites are not attacks but rather a failed attempt to find a fish. Authorities say shark bites are extremely rare, with only one bite reported last year in North Carolina. However, the combination of peak tour season and warm waters can increase the risk. Experts also said the swimming and surfing near fishing piers, such as one Atlantic Beach, can greatly increase the chances of getting bit because sharks are likely to be looking for prey in areas with a lot of fish. Little North County Tourism Development Authority is working with its partners to promote Kinston as a tourist destination. The plan involves creating a brand identity and marketing strategy for a consistent image that will attract visitors, recruit investment, and build local pride. The consulting team of Arnett, Moldo, and Associates is hosting a public meeting at the Kinston Community Center from 5.30 until 6.30. That's going to happen later on tonight if you want to go ahead and stop by. And speaking of stopping by, the Emerald Isle Police Department is hosting its monthly police educating the public program later on this morning. The program will focus on firearm laws and safety. The session is for local residents, property owners, and businesses. Officials hope to raise public awareness, prevent crime, and promote public safety. The meeting will begin at 10 a.m. in the town board meeting room. Those are Lace News headlines from WI10, WI10.com. Just a few minutes, half past the hour. I'm Menning Brick. I don't get it. What? He jingled in, but he didn't jingle out. He didn't I'm, jingle now, out? Now I'm so confused. How do you not jingle right. out? I don't know. Well, no, jingle out is no the most jingle, important no jingle. No jingle out. I don't know. It's, it's, no jingle. It's confusing. You can't even do the weather now. It's mm. confusing. Someone jingle for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's McGee with the weather. Perfect. <laughs> what do we got for weather? Partly cloudy <laughs> skies for the day. <laughs> Scattered <laughs> afternoon showers and storms. That's enough for the jingle. Tone okay. down. Right. Highs reaching to the upper 80s for today. A rain chance 40% for tonight. We'll see partly cloudy skies with a lingering shower. Lows in the lower 70s. And for your Wednesday, partly cloudy with scattered showers and storms in the afternoon with highs in the upper 80s. All right, so during the commercial break, I went out into the lobby. I, I took a photograph on my phone. McGee, you're not listening. I am. Yeah, photograph I took a phone. photograph on my phone, and it went into my phone and into my hearing aid through Bluetooth. I couldn't believe it. McGee saw it happen. It's an amazing uh, thing. I, it's, the chief saw it happen. Rebecca saw it happen. I think it's. Yeah. I have three witnesses that it works. So uh, this this hearing aid th stuff is incredible. It is. It's amazing. It is. What a so feature. So now you're guilty that I have a hearing aid. Be honest. Jealous. I mean jealous. Jealous. I'm guilty. You're jealous. You're guilty. No, I don't know. I think it's a great feature. I'm not really guilty, <laughs> but. Anyway, let's move We're on. Uh, McGee, um, Engelbrecht is leaving us now, right? You know what starts today, Henry? What's that? First class. Are oh, you teaching at ECU again? Yeah, that's true. 930. What's happened to let's our education system? Let's get those seats. System? Booties in the seats. we got to learn about weather. That's what's what we're what's do. happened to our education what system? What do you mean what happened to the education system? These kids are paying tuition, and you're, look, look what they Come get. Come on by. Look Come on by. Get. We'll learn a thing or two. Talk what, about jet streams. What are you teaching? Mm, yeah. 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 Suit and tie. Very professional. You do not here. wear a suit and tie. Henry. Henry. Look at me. What you think I'd walk in there want to mold the, the what minds of students? Are you what department are you teaching in? The we weather department? <laughs> There's no weather department. Is this like a... <laughs> You're making this up. Yeah. You're totally making... I'm calling the chancellor's office right now. No, no, no. no, no. I demand I, I, these I, I, students I, 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 get their like recreation money I'm back. <laughs> no, what's the department, really? Uh, geography? Uh, geology? Ge uh, geography. So the weather is the... Uh, geography is the umbrella. Yeah. Geography department. And you're actually teaching students. Uh-huh. Yep, out of Brewster. Are, uh, you're going to teach in the in the prison uh, building. It's called Brewster, but I've, yeah. I've always <laughs> thought that the Brewster building looked like a prison. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think bad. we say yeah. We're going to meet in the prison. You know, of all, all the beautiful stuff we've built on the ECU campus, what they what were they thinking when they built that Brewster building? Let's put the scientists. There. It literally looks like Central Prison in Raleigh, yeah. doesn't it? Uh huh. I've never understood that building. <laughs> Maybe a little. We got so many beautiful buildings, and you know we don't build ugly buildings like that anymore, but. 
All right. Well, so, Professor uh, Engelbrecht, it's been nice having you here this morning. Thank you, Henry. Uh, how old are these students? Are they third old grade? Old enough. Third grade, fourth grade? <laughs> they're not. No, they're college <laughs> students. College. Is this show and tell? <laughs> is this show and tell or are you really All teaching right. the class? All right. All right. We're going to go to break. It is uh, half past the hour. Coming back, there is a recruitment fair for Greenville Fire and Rescue. We've got Rebecca, one of our favorites, Rebecca Thurston, live in the studio with us this morning. And Chief Eric Griffin, the chief of uh, Greenville Fire and Rescue. A lot to talk to him about. Stay with us. We'll be right back. It's summertime here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. We have a huge selection and hot deals on new Ram trucks and new Jeeps. It's a summer of Jeep. Lease a new 2019 Jeep Cherokee for only $279 a month with only $279 due at signing. Or lease a new Jeep Grand Cherokee for only $329 a month with only $329 due at signing. It's Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Come see us. Come see us. Purple and gold are back. Middle of the field, Trayvon Brown, 10-5, touchdown Pirate Trayvon has done it again. Experience all the pride, passion, and tradition that is ECU football. It's all hands on deck for the 2018 season. Join the Pirate Club and purchase your season tickets today by calling 800-DIAL-ECU or visiting us online at ecupirates.com. How I define making, in the broadest possible terms, it is making something extant in the world that didn't exist. Everybody who's ever made anything is bringing something into fruition for a reason. And that act in and of itself makes us stewards of our culture. It's something that we're talking about. It's a response. Actually, it's telling a story. That's really what it is. And I include everything that could be made, painting, sculpture, welding, all of that. Yellow is positive. When a kid gets their hands on the world and learns that they can make their fantasy play, that they can make their reality, that's power. And as far as I'm concerned, everyone should feel that kind of power. There we go. If there's something that interests you to bring into the world, that's fantastic. Go figure out how to do it. Go tell your own story. There it is. And so I want to know why you make. Let's go. Share your own Why I Make story today. Visit whyimake.org. This is the Pepsi that gets you stuff. Like tickets to... Who doesn't love Pepsi stuff? Drink Pepsi, get stuff. Greenville Toyota's deals are so hot, you need to see them to believe them. Get red hot savings on hundreds of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs, including the extra value of our advantage. Now at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. You have the power. The power to inspire their potential. The power to change their world and show them their own strength. It's easy for you. Life changing. For them, give them the power to dream. Become a Junior Achievement Volunteer. Wait, wait let, me, let me explain something to you. Now back to Henry Hinton. I'm the dude. And talk of the town. So that's what you call me, you know? Uh, that or uh, his dudeness or uh, duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino, if you're not into the whole brevity thing. I just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. All right, welcome back. 27 in front of the hour. Coming up on August 25th, the Greenville Fire and Rescue Department will have a recruitment fair, their 12th annual Academy Recruitment Fair. Here to talk about that is uh, our buddy Rebecca Thurston. Good morning, Who Henry. is a regular on our show. You hadn't been on recently. We need to get I you know. on. I know. You're too busy I, for I, me. No, I envisioned uh, being uh, on vacation a lot this summer and you Didn't coming happen. in and doing the show with McGee, but it just hasn't happened. I haven't taken vacation either. <laughs> makes me feel any better. Also, the uh, chief, the fire chief is here, Chief Eric Griffin. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Nice to see you. 
Yes, sir. Hadn't you seen too. you in a while. We haven't had any fires out here in this building recently, so I hadn't had a chance to put my... <laughs> <laughs> we were just talking about that out in the studio. <laughs> we, we used to see you in the parking lot quite a bit, and we had a specific tenant in this building that kept setting the building on fire. Yeah. <laughs> but, Oops. but he's gone now. So. Oops. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Yes, sir. Doing great. All right. A lot to talk about. Um, I want to get into uh, some of the uh, more controversial things that have come up in the media recently, including this study that was done uh, by the city. But first, before we do that, uh, let's talk about your recruitment fair. You are you are having your 12th annual Academy Recruitment Fair coming up on the 25th of August. Who wants to talk about that? I'll let Rebecca talk. Yeah. All right, so um, this is our third recruitment fair, actually. Um, it's not a new event, but it is it's, an exciting it's one. It's the 12th Annual Academy, I guess. Correct. Is that what so I read? it's our 12th Academy. We do an academy um, every year with Pitt Community College. Um, so what happens is we put we there, we go through a hiring process, and then we put all these people who do not have to have any background in fire or EMS, which is really cool, and we put them through an academy, and they learn how to be a firefighter and an EMT. And they get paid to do it. Oh, very isn't that nice. cool? Yeah. Do you know that many people that pay you to learn your job? No, that, so, that doesn't happen very often. That's so, pretty cool. So it, it takes place at Pitt Community. So uh, it takes place both uh, at their continuing ed campus, but also at our emergency operations center. So it, it's like a dual it's a partnership. So, uh, uh, Chief, no, no specific requirements in your background to become a firefighter. You, if you decide you want to do this. You guys take care of the training, is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So how long does it take from the time you sign up to do this until you're actually, um, you know, on the on the force? So typically it takes about a year to go through the training. Uh, part of that is about seven months in an academy where they learn both fire and EMS skills. Right. And and uh, we, we're, at, we're at a point in time where, uh, it, you know, it's no longer you, you have to be able to do both. You have to be a fireman and a EMS, right? Here in Greenville, absolutely, yeah. Is, it, is, it, is that the trend across the country generally? Mm. Well, it's not the trend across the country that you have both fire and EMS co-located in the same place. What you do have in most fire departments, they have at least a minimum level of, of EMTs on their fire trucks. So they first respond in many cases to the mm -hmm. calls. Uh, unlike here in Greenville, we both not only will we first respond, we also transport people to the hospital, which is a great service for the city of Greenville. Right. Uh, so uh, what do you do to get in the, in the, in the pipeline here to, to be part of this recruiting process? So if you're interested at all at um, coming out and, and applying for the academy or applying for fire rescue, I really encourage you to come out to the recruitment fair because it's really cool. It's an uh, interesting opportunity to learn all about the department, about the academy. Pitt Community College will be there and talk to you about uh, um, your resume and applying and, and how to go through that process. HR is going to be there from the city and talking about that process as well. It's a pretty lengthy process. I mean, we don't let just anybody in here. They got to have some um, serious passion and, and drive and and you know want to help people so what why, why should someone do this chief what what what's the what is the benefit I know uh, people that you know might be looking for a job might be interested in doing this but what are the benefits of, of uh, going into this field work well what I will say is most of the people that we hire they come in with a passion of wanting to help other people and if you have that passion, that's that's one of the biggest benefits because you get to go to work every day and be generally happy with the work that you're performing. Not always going to say that you're going to be happy with the people that you're working with because you work <laughs> with a lot of different people from a lot of different backgrounds, and it takes time to kind of understand one another. But you get to be happy that you're actually providing a very – uh, needed service in this community. Right, right. How many total people, when you're at full strength, how many total people on the uh, fire and rescue department uh, force? 164. 164. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, this will be coming up on the 25th of August. Yep, this Saturday, 9 to 1. This Saturday. This Saturday. Just show up, or do you have to sign up? Nope, event? show up. It's an open house, and guess what? We have food. Okay. <laughs> All right, where do you go at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning? So we'll be at the Emergency Operations Center, which is out behind Station 6, which is on 10th Street, so next to Copper Beach, 33 East, and on that side of town. Okay. Um, so on the Hastings just come Ford on back side there. of town, yes. as we always say. Yeah. the Hastings yeah. Ford side of yeah. town. Where is that? So that's where I'm, I'm, I didn't know that was where your Emergency Operations Center Well, it's secretive. I just let it out. Yeah, you did. You, I mean, so you go, you, you, you go like out toward Brook Valley. Well, is it past Brook the Valley? fire station? It's behind the fire station, literally. Like you yeah. go past, you pull into the fire station and drive past it. 
Yeah, it's before you get to the Brook Valley turnoff. So it's between right. Hastings Ford and Brook Valley. That's correct. correct. Show up there at 9 a.m., and you'll learn everything you need to learn. and uh, get, get a leg up. Get in the pipeline to be a fire person and a, and a uh, EMT. Firefighter. Right. Firefighter, excuse That's right. me. Mm-hmm. All right, very good. Women are welcome. Uh, all right, let's talk about some less uh, um, uh, positive things. There's been a lot of negative stuff, Chief. Uh, and I know you want to respond to some of this stuff. Um, they're, they're, for the last year or so, there's been a lot of negative media. The, uh, the campus newspaper at ECU started a series where they started to um, accuse uh, Greenville Fire and Rescue of uh, alleged allegations of misconduct and mismanagement, things like that. That has led to the city manager asking an organization to come in. Um, in March, they had uh, a group uh, a co- of consultants called... Uh, Developmental Associates LLC came in and did uh, an an entire assessment where they went through and interviewed current and former employees and uh, and made uh, some recommendations and outlined their findings. And and some of the findings I know uh, had to be disturbing to you. 47% uh, on the force described poor morale. 45% said they were unhappy with their compensation. 24% 24% said they are unhappy with their opportunity for career advancement, and this was the one that really struck me, and I want to get your response to it. 67% of the ones who have left said they left due to morale issues. So I wanted to give you a chance to respond to all that. So, yeah, we've been working on this uh, for a little over a year, um, and I think that the study and the assessment was important for the city manager to get an understanding of how uh, some people were feeling in the department. I think that uh, there was a lot of information being put out there. What I'll say, uh, a lot of it was not correct. Uh, There was somewhat one-sided information that really didn't thoroughly vet out some of the issues. Uh, Do we have uh, room for improvement in the department? Sure. I think that every single organization, uh, wherever you work at, there's room for improvement. There's going to be people who are either... Uh, not happy with their job or their their compensation or they're not happy with some something about that job and so one of the things I will say when we see some of those numbers we didn't have that information Uh, when people were leaving uh, many times they don't tell you that they're upset because of their job they say well they're moved they're going to another job or their family's moving so we don't really get that so an assessment like the one that was done, helps you to get that information. And what we do is we respond to it and try to make it better uh, for the people that's there and the people that's coming. When you see a number like 67% of the people who are leaving or are responding, again, they probably didn't tell you this, but that when they were surveyed and, and, and interviewed by these consultants, they're saying, yeah, I left because of morale issues. What, uh, what do you attribute that to, and, and, and what, are you, what are you going to do about that? Well, one of the things, that was a much smaller group of people that uh, responded to that part of the survey. Uh, so I wasn't surprised that it would be a higher number. Uh, anonymous survey, so you can pretty much put in there, you know, whatever you want. Uh, one of the things we're going to do is make sure that we're, when we're doing exit interviews, we'll work with our human resource department to try to make sure we understand uh, when people are leaving. Because we, we're still going to have people that leave. And keep in mind, too, the other thing that when he said people that left, some of those people truly retired. They were allowed right. to be a part of the uh, the uh, the survey instrument. Uh, so, uh, I, you know, I, I'm a hope that when people do 30 years with the city that they're happy at the end of the 30 years. I probably would have some separation anxiety if I was some of them. So maybe uh, – Maybe, you know, we got to make sure we understand that as well so that we can uh, improve the process. The, one of the things uh, also, I'm trying to vet all this stuff out and give you a chance to respond to it because we've not had you on, and, um, and I know this, has been, this stuff's been out there on social media, and the campus newspaper's been doing a lot on this over the last year. Is, uh, people say that, that they the sense that the upper staff – the way the report put it, so the upper staff downs officers, that there's some sort of uh, disconnect between the way that the people in the upper management speak down and manage people at the lower level. Do you think that's an unfair assessment? 
Um, yeah, I, I do think it's unfair, but I will tell you, uh, last week, um, well, actually, week before last, I was at the International Fire Chiefs Conference, and one of the things that we're recognizing in the industry is that we do have a communication issue that is occurring from the, the senior-level management down to the middle-level managers. Uh, and so there's a disconnect that's happening in our service, and I'll say that as the fire service in general. And we have to find more, better ways to communicate so that the information that's coming from the top gets all the way at the bottom, and the information from the bottom gets all the way to the top, because a lot of times we don't know it until there's an actual issue, because there is so many layers of supervision, which is important for the work that we do. We will be changing up some of our communication processes. For, for example, uh, our general officers meeting, we're going to open it up to anybody that wants to come. So if you're a brand new firefighter and you really want to know what's going on within the organization, what policies may be uh, changing or adjusting, or if you have some information you want to provide or give your input, we're going to open it up to everybody so that we can communicate better. I want to ask you about one more thing that the uh, campus newspaper, the East Carolinian, and the East Carolinian jumped on this story. They were obviously getting information fed to them by former employees or people who are disgruntled employees and, and, and things like that. But one of the things that they said was a little bit shocking. And then, uh, uh, there was, uh, m potentially some misinformation about this. I want to find out for sure is that, um, the, the, the tall buildings on campus that there was, there's a, I guess what you call a tower, which is the fire truck that has the long ladder. Is that a call to tower? That is. Okay, that one of the towers had been taken out of service because of um, um, uh, lack of training and, and, and not being able to be used. And as a result, that the fire department did not have a ladder that could reach the top of these tall buildings on campus. Was any of that true? Because the campus newspaper printed that on, on a couple of occasions. Well, most of that article, what he printed, was untrue. He's not telling the, uh, the full story. But I will tell you, uh, that tower truck that we have is a 100-foot reach. Uh, it's a large vehicle. Uh, it's designed for, you know, taller buildings. We've had one of those type of vehicles in the city at various times throughout my 26-year career and it's been staffed the same way from when I started almost 26 years ago. So when he started writing that and some of the people that provide that information, they were basically being untrue themselves by sort of misleading. We, we did have one person on that truck. It's used very little. Uh, and what I'll say is, and I'll, I'll say this, in my tw almost 26 years, we've actually had one true uh, time that we'd use it for rescue. But I, And what I also would say is, this city is very well equipped when it comes to tower ladder trucks. We actually have a taller truck that's more capable of getting to buildings on ECU that's right down at that build, uh, station on 10th Street. It's 107 feet. He never told that part of it. And that truck, if there's a fire at ECU, it responds as well as probably four other different fire trucks. Mm -hmm. And there's also people on the EMS units. So when he started counting fire trucks and we don't have enough people, all of our firefighters and EMTs are cross-trained to do all the jobs. So we're different from most cities. So if you, do, you don't see a person on the truck, doesn't mean they're not coming to that same incident. Mm -hmm. So we put a lot of people, when it comes to fires, we put a lot of people on the scene to take care of the issues. Did you want to say something about Yeah, that? actually, so one of the things that just was very clear is that they didn't understand what they were writing about. As a former journalist myself, that was frustrating um, because they said that there's no... A truck to reach the top of the building, right? Okay, so the towers that are really tall in New York City, Chicago, do you think that there are fire trucks in their district that can reach the top of their buildings? No, that's not the primary method that we're going to use. That's not the most effective way to handle situations like that all the time. And so that's just, it wasn't even very well researched. Right, right. And, and again, this was, the, I will say this, this was the campus newspaper. Correct. It was mostly, I, I don't know, I, I haven't done any uh, background, but I'm assuming it was a student reporter. Yes. Uh, and and it, it appeared in reading, and I read through some of that last night in preparation for you being here today, it appeared that they were getting a lot of information from someone from the outside. And I would just ask you, did, were they contacting you for responses to these things before they wrote them? So what they were doing is asking for a lot of public records requests. And when we did provide them information, they tend to not provide uh, the public with all of the information. Uh, we worked 
really good with uh, ECU. We've got a great relationship with environmental safety as well as the public safety group over there. And what I'll say is that's one thing about ECU, they take safety to the utmost. Those buildings are probably some of the safest buildings we have in this whole entire city. Yeah. Yeah. So when you look at the construction type and the rules that the state puts on them and their willingness to be, uh, want to make sure the students are safe, the stories that the East Carolina was writing made no sense. Yeah, I think the East Carolinian was trying to instill fear into people when they they didn't really need to. So I met yeah. with some of these student uh, organizations over there and said, "Listen, let me just show you all re why you're safer in these type of buildings than uh, than you know just yeah. in a regular wood frame building." It's interesting uh, that this all that we're having this discussion this morning after the big brouhaha in Asheville this week. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> because those buildings were built with wood. Yeah. And what you're saying is the ones on campus at ECU were not. No, no. they're they're not built. They they got sprinkler systems. Why would fire you, Why systems. would you build a dorm out of wood these days anyway? I, I don't really understand why they would do that. Maybe cost, but yeah, it's probably but, cost. Uh, but again, we talked about this earlier in the show. The Department of Insurance and the state construction management office had a disagreement about it. And the insurance commissioner, as it turned out, uh, wouldn't let the students go in. And so construction management actually overruled them and said, look, you don't even have that jurisdiction. But here's the thing I would say about that. If my ch child is moving into that dorm, I want to know that both the insurance department <laughs> and the construction management department agree that the building's safe. You want them on the same side of that one. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so exactly. we, we we definitely have concerns when we see buildings be, being built out of a lot of wood, and we want to make sure that they're safe. And we do that through our life safety services here in the city to make sure that every building is safe for not only the students but also uh, visitors and anybody anybody else may occupy these buildings. I, I, uh, we're about out of time, but I want to give you a chance to kind of to wrap this up. Um, uh, we live in a an era of social media where anybody can say anything about anybody. And but some of this it seems uh, once it got to the level uh, of of this study that was done by the city, there were some things in it. I would imagine that when you read them, uh, it, you were taken aback. Uh, how has this affected you? How will this change your style of management? And and, and where do, where do you go from here as the leader of the department? Well, it's made me take a really good look at both myself as well as. I do a lot of studying of leadership in general, and leaders in this country right now are taking, uh, they've taken a beating in some cases. Really, uh, it doesn't matter whether it's a public or private organization, <laughs> leaders are really having to step up, and that's what I plan to do, change some of the way that I communicate, be out at the stations more visible to try to make sure I'm understanding what's going on at the, uh, the, at the, at the station level, as well as all the way up to my level, make sure I can bring that back and look for ways to improve. What I will say, Henry, is that we have an excellent fire rescue service in this city. Always have. It didn't just start with me. There's been a lot of good people. We are actually uh, working on one of the biggest projects the department has ever worked on, and that's the fire service uh, accreditation. That accreditation will prove that we are on par with the best fire and rescue departments throughout this country and internationally. Over 49,000 fire rescue departments throughout the country and internationally, only 300 are accredited. In March of 2019, we will sit before the commission and that will go further to show the city of Greenville how great their service is. Thank you for being here. And thank, thank you. you for letting me ask you those questions. I know you've been wanting a public forum. I know you had a press conference, but this was a good opportunity for you to respond to some of those things that have been critical about you over the last year. So I appreciate you being willing to do that. Yes, sir. And we Rebecca, thank you. you. It's good to see you. Thanks, Henry. Will you good come back here. and co-host soon? Sure. All right, good. All right, we got to get a break in. We will be back. Again, the recruitment fair, 9 a.m. on this East Saturday. 10th Street. This Saturday. East be 10th there. Street. All right, good. Thank you for, for uh, telling us about it. Thank you. We'll be right back. Looking for red hot deals on a new Toyota? You'll find it at Greenville Toyota. Hot, hot, hot. Get our best deals of summer with clearance savings on hundreds of new Toyotas at deals you need to see to believe. At Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. This is the Pepsi that gets you stuff. Like tickets to. Who doesn't love Pepsi stuff? Drink Pepsi, get stuff. Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop believing. Oh, all, a all your favorites. Yeah, just like the ocean, with Mark Mark.
Jack and Laura in the morning. Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. Sometimes coming home can be a battle in itself. Our wounded warriors need everyone's support to meet the challenges they face every day. The USO provides every American a way to support them and their families. What? It's good to be back. Join us. Visit USO.org to learn how you can make a difference in the lives of our wounded warriors. The USO. Until everyone comes home. Looking for red hot deals on a new Toyota? You'll find it at Greenville Toyota. Get our best deals of summer with clearance savings on hundreds of new Toyotas and deals you need to see to believe at Greenville Toyota, where our volume saves you money. It, it is an experience that people want to participate in, but we called it Ain't It Great to Tailgate. And sure, when things are going great and you're winning, the excitement accelerates. It was great fun to watch the tradition being built. But we need everybody pulling in the same direction now. We'll get the success back. We need the fans back to be a part of it. Okay, we are done for the day. Uh, great interview. Appreciate uh, Chief uh, Griffin coming in this morning and uh, getting to the bottom of some of this uh, controversy with the Greenville Fire Department. Now if we could just figure out what's going on in the police department. <laughs> That's going to be an interesting story to continue to uh, follow. We will do that for you. And tomorrow we have a very interesting guest. We have an SBI agent that deals in child crimes on the computer. If you have children, you'll want to hear that tomorrow on the show. See you then. Carolina's greatest hits play all day on 1079 WNCT. Don't stop believing. All your favorites. With Mark, Mark, and Laura in the morning. Carolina's greatest hits play here. WNCT. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in Eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks and we've discounted every one of them to move. Save up to $12,000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now at the Summer Clearance Event. And come test drive the all new 2019 Rams that are now here in stock. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. It's summertime here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. We have a huge selection and hot deals on new Ram trucks and new Jeeps. Come see us. Come see us. It's the summer clearance event. Right now, get up to $12,000 in total savings on select 2018 Ram 1500 trucks. And come check out the all-new redesigned 2019 Rams that have just arrived. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. Come see us. Come see us. The purple and gold are back. Middle of the field, Trayvon Brown, 10-5. Touchdown, Pirate Trayvon has done it again. Experience all the pride, passion, and...
and tradition that is ECU football. It's all hands on deck for the 2018 season. Join the Pirate Club and purchase your season tickets today by calling 800-DIAL-ECU or visiting us online at ecupirates.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram is the truck dealer in eastern North Carolina. We are overloaded with new Ram trucks and we've discounted every one of them to move. Save up to $12,000 in total savings on select Ram 1500 trucks right now at the Summer Clearance Event. And come test drive the all-new 2019 Rams that are now here in stock. Visit us at WashingtonChrysler.com. Washington Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Drive a little to save a lot. 